Welcome back to this Getting Started series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add the products and services you plan on selling, organize them into groups, and then enter the figures for your sales forecast. Last video, I was demoing from a complete plan, but I've now started a new plan with no figures in at all, just the basic starting template on the left. This comes with two groups of products already, which I'll immediately delete by selecting them and pressing delete. So I want to show you how to set up a group from scratch. Now, I'm planning a new brand of sports gear, sold online. So to start with, I click the add group button and call it gym gear. This has opened up a panel showing different components I can add to this group. Each type fulfills a different financial task, such as forecasting a salary or taking out a loan. For now, we're just interested in the green income component, which is designed to forecast your sales. Click to add as many as you need and close the panel by pressing the Add Components button. You can double click to rename the row and use drag and drop to rearrange them. I'll just add a few more and be back in a moment. So I've added new products and a new group. You can see I'm organizing my groups by sport category, but this could equally be by brand or any other category relevant to what you sell. Now click the row to open the forecast for that product. So by default, income components allow you to enter a sales figure repeating by the period shown in this dropdown. You can enter varying amounts over time by clicking this table button. And if you already have figures in a spreadsheet, this is where you can copy and paste them into the grid. Pressing save and close confirms what you've done and fires off the figures into your dashboard and reports. Let's revisit that component and show you some more useful techniques. I'm gonna switch it over to income per unit, which allows me to set a price and forecast the volume of unit sales. I'll sell this t-shirt for 25 pounds and now trying to create a realistic unit forecast if you don't have past data to go on can be tricky. You'll need to do market research and work out what portion of your target market you can reach, the leads you can bring in, and then how many of those you'll actually convert into a customer. This deserves an entire video in and of itself. So for now, let's say that my research suggests selling 20 units per month is not an unrealistic goal. Let's also say that the end of year holiday periods are a great time for sales. So I'll select November, December, and January and increase these by 50% using the fill option. Let's also say that summer is pretty good too since everyone hits the gym to get their beach bodies. I'll increase that period by 30% too. Okay, save and close, and you can see I've got a more realistic forecast together with some basic seasonality going on. So next, I'm going to fill out the next couple of years by copying the first year over. I'm going to make the assumption that we're going to successfully grow the business in the following year so that we make 25% more sales. This time I select fill and choose the adjust sales option and increase them by 25%. I'll repeat the task for the third year, this time increasing by 40% since we'll obviously be highly successful by then. Save and close once more to see the results. Okay, so I've entered the forecast for a few more products and I want to finish this video looking at our reports. They're still mostly empty at this point, but on the cash flow, we've started to populate the cash received line. When I drill in, you can see the total of the different sports categories and further, the individual products themselves. You may notice that some of the figures are starting later into the plan. Now that's because I went over to the timeline and dragged the start dates of each component to when I anticipated launching. In the next video, we're gonna continue through the fundamental building blocks. We've done income, now we're gonna move on to expenditure. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.